G'day, mate. Welcome to Captain Industry with me, Jilly. Today, I want to talk about power. To be more exact, I want to talk about power generation 2, because power generation 1 was whacked down one of these lovely diesel generators in front of us. Add some diesel, electricity comes out the other side. Not too hard, not too complicated. The cash is not too efficient. And we sort of need diesel to run the trucks. No trucks equals no logistics. No logistics equals no Captain Industry. Bad things happen. So, what I want to do is I want to talk you guys through power generation 2 with turbines and flywheels and power generators and boilers and all that sort of fun stuff. Now, to do that, I need to ask some things, okay? First off, now you know what the topic's gonna be. One, can I borrow a like? I just wanna borrow a like, and I wanna keep it. I just wanna borrow it towards the end of the video. I'll remind you guys again, at that point, that you guys can either decide, do I get to keep the like, or do you want it back? If you want it back, that's perfectly fine. I just wanna borrow it. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way before we talk about this complicated monster, because power generation two, it's not simple. It's not simple. There's a lot of moving components. Second thing I need to tell you guys is we're going to be talking through this in stages. So I'm going to talk about what each of the items are, how they work, and then we're going to build a power plant together because it always helps to see it put in practice rather than just talking about it. Last thing I want to remind you guys is there are chapters down the bottom. So if you want to jump forward, jump backward, you want to come back and double check how I did something, get a recap. By all means, the chapter's there to hopefully help you. Whilst you look in the chapters, if you find there's more tutorial topics you'd like to see on Captain of Industry, there is the playlist down there with a whole bunch of other tutorial videos. But with that out of the way, let's talk about our, our four components because there really is just four components to advanced power. Power generation two. There is the boiler. Boiler's a pretty simple one. Water goes in. Some sort of fuel comes in, fuel gets burnt, hot stuff comes out, being steam, and that's also going to give us exhaust. The hot stuff, being the steam, is going to go into the high pressure turbine. High pressure turbine is going to take in some hot stuff, being steam, output mechanical power, and low pressure steam. Low pressure steam, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be venting, but you do get technology later, which will actually turn it to more mechanical power or other byproducts. But that's, that's, that's a whole different video for a whole nother time. Then our mechanical power is going to come into a power generator. It's going to take in the mechanical power, which came from the steam, which came from the water, i.e. hot stuff, turns into mechanical power, turns into electricity, because that's what the power generator does. Now, in the case of the power generator, the tier one, the very first one you start off with, takes in five kilowatts worth of, 500 kilowatts worth of mechanical power and outputs 300 kilowatts worth of electricity. That's it. There is a loss. It's a reasonably high loss. Again, as you progress through the game, you'll get better generators, more efficient generators. We'll, we'll say we upgraded a bearing or two and you'll have a less, less, less of a loss. Last one is a flywheel. The flywheel is essentially a battery. That's all it really is. I really recommend you use them, but that's pretty much the four items. Now, the boiler is pretty simple. The power generator is pretty simple. The high pressure turbine has all sorts of buttons and knobs and things that we're gonna have to talk our way through step by step. So the first one I talk, wanna talk about is the throughput, which is not actually listed because it's not connected to a drive shaft. So we'll probably cover drive shaft first. Every single item on the power generation is connected by one drive shaft. We can see this input output all the way along. If I flip something backwards, it doesn't work. Don't flip things backward. But as long as things are connected on this drive shaft, they're all connected together. So now I've got this connected on a drive shaft, we can th see the throughput. The throughput is a how much mechanical force you're inputting or exporting from the drive shaft at that exact second. That's what it is. Now, what does that mean in English? Well, first off, drive shaft, it's only so strong. Okay, there is only so much you can put on it before an axle is going to break. So the total throughput of the shaft is 12 megawatts. So you can have up to 12 megawatts worth of mechanical power going into the drive shaft and 12 megawatts coming out of the drive shaft at the same time. That's your limit. So in the case of these guys, they provide one megawatt with mechanical power. So I can string 12 high pressure turbines together. In the case of the power generators, they do 500 kilowatts. Two of those added together is one megawatt. So I can string 24 of these guys, being 12 multiplied by two, yep, into a single drive shaft without a problem, which is a very long drive shaft, but the game doesn't stop you doing it. You can go as long as you want. Hell, if you want to put a whole bunch of the flywheels all through a drive shaft, and you want to have power running from one side of the map to the other with, you know, generators at one side and a string of flywheels and the turbines at the other side of the map, it's perfectly fine. Game does not stop you. But 12 megawatts is the maximum limit. You can add more. You just can't use it at the same time. So again, let's go back to having a drive shaft going all the way across the map. You can have power generation at one end, power generation at the other, all the usage in the middle, and then only one end can run, run at once. So you can add more, but only 12 megawatts can be run at one time. Okay, flywheel, big battery. 
when I say big battery, if we actually, where is power generation? If we actually hover over this, it tells us it's 80 megawatt seconds worth of mechanical power as inertia. Think of inertia as when you get in your car, you're driving down the road and you take your foot off the accelerator, it doesn't stop. It keeps going, it keeps rolling, it has inertia. Same concept. The flywheel is basically a giant chunk of iron that spins. That's all it does. It doesn't have any losses, it doesn't have any pros, it doesn't have any cons. It's just a giant chunk of metal that spins around. Because it's spinning around, it means our megawatt seconds here number has gone up. As we can see, I got 84. If I remove that one guy so they're no longer connected, I've got four megawatt seconds. Each high pressure turbine adds about two megawatt seconds. Each of the power generators add about one megawatt second. This guy adds 80. Now, you might say, why do I need battery power, JD? I just want to use it all. The catch is you don't want to actually use it all. Like I'm currently using six to 700 kilowatts worth of power. This, these two combined together produce 600 kilowatts. I don't have an option for 700. If I add another one on there, that's 900. I don't want to produce 900 kilowatts worth of electricity because I'm not using 900 kilowatts. So having some sort of battery on your drive shaft, not a bad idea. In fact, I highly recommend it. Uh, next one we're going to talk about is efficiency. So when it comes to the high pressure turbines, any turbine in fact, when you first turn them on, they take some time and they waste some energy getting up to speed. Just like your car does. Again, you put in the keys, you turn on the engine, you can't drop it straight into, straight into drive or drop the clutch and go. You need to wait for the, a second for the engine to get up to speed. Same concept here. It's running on steam power. It takes some time for it to get up to speed. Consequently, you want to keep it running most of the time and off. You don't want it to go start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. We all know how much wear and tear goes on our cars from start, stop at traffic lights all the time. Much prefer to go on the freeway, drive for four hours, car doesn't really care. Driving around town, hot day, well, hot day depending on what country you're in. I'm in Australia. It's hot every day. Driving around town, hot day, I have had more than one issue with my car said no because it spent all day going start stop traffic okay that's pretty much the main concepts for right now but i think the really the best way to demonstrate it is we need to build a power plant so to do that we're going to remove everything i'm going to throw unity problem so it all goes away and we're going to start pro where do we start unity go away um let's start with the high pressure turbines i like the high pressure turbines it seems like a unity Go away fast. Oh, game speed three. God, that takes forever to go away. Okay, high pressure turbines. Um, I'm going to put two of these side by side. And the reason I'm going to put two of these side by side is we have a boiler, uh, which I'm going to slot in uh, there. Okay, boiler is going to produce uh, 48 high pressure steam from 48 water. This uses 24 and this uses 24. So obviously, if I have 48 and I put 24 in there and 24 in there, then i've used up all the steam which is ideal so i'm going to hook a little pipe into there and actually you're in the wrong spot already let's try that again jenny uh i want a boiler i want to flip you and i want to put you there now i'm better okay uh transports we want to take a pipe i want to hook it to the first one and hook it in the second one okay you are obviously going to need water and you're going to need coal uh conveniently i have some groundwater pumps over here which are going to provide the water and i just need to get this up and out of the way one pipe uh sure two pipe okay so groundwater pump and the only reason i'm using groundwater pumps is i literally happen to have water right here so it seems like a pretty good spot to build power but they provide 48 water conveniently this guy needs 48 water it was like a match made in heaven so we're going to take our 48 water we're going to dump it straight in there i am going to grab a u-shaped connector belt and actually let's just run it across here stay and we'll run a friend across here and block off all the trucks you can't get behind there dude uh can i get a building ramp really whatever you can go there uh quick deliver go all right so i'm gonna take uh two transport lines and i'm gonna tag one into there okay one transport line. Yep, change my mind. One transport line. Okay, one transport line, and that's going to give us our coal. Okay, we're going to unpause everything already. Uh, throw uni at the problem so it's all instant built. Uh, unpause you as well. Okay, so first off, coal. I need to wait for the coal to get here. That can take a second. 
Okay, that's unfortunate. I probably should have thought that through. All right, we're going to get some coal in here, and it's going to start turning on. Now, before... No, oh, I need to deal. Oh, oh, perfect, perfect. On time, delivery service has been accomplished. Okay, so we're, we're going to output steam. Now, when we output steam, uh, we're going to have an issue where I didn't account for exhaust because I was literally about to do that. Uh, quick deliver and unpause. Cool. We can see, oh, we can see already. We already filled the shaft full of power. Okay, I already maxed out how much mechanical power can be stored on here. Uh, I also didn't hook up your exhausts. I apologize. Uh, as I said, for right now, we have nothing to do with low pressure steam. Uh, so I'm just going to vent the stuff. But I filled up the mechanical shaft full of power because I have nothing on it. And these are running. They're running right now. They are consuming steam out of the system and doing nothing with it. That's less than ideal. So what we want to do is obviously put some power generators on here. I might not have enough room at all. Uh, you know what? Let's put two on that side and put two on that side. Okay. Unpause those guys. Throw you the problem. All right. So with our little power generators on there, which I will intentionally set to power priority one to make sure we use power from these generators rather than others. So, you know, we can we can talk about these things one at a time. Okay. So now I've got both those guys running. You're running flat out. You're running flat out. You're not quite flat out, and you're doing nothing, which is 900, 900. Um, I've got some bit of power coming from somewhere doing something. Okay, but we can see that the efficiency's gone down. Efficiency's gone down for two reasons. One, the drive shaft is fully charged. So I've got steam coming in here at full speed. Like there's, there's no spare steam backing up in the system. It's disappearing straight away. It's coming here and being vented right out the other side because I have no need for it. It can't do anything. What we can do is we can grab one of those flywheels and we can put you on the end, which will definitely quick deliver and quick build. And then we have somewhere for that. We're going to pause you. Yes, pause. Thank you. All right. Well, we're wasting that power. Now, I do have this button here called auto balance. Now, if I turn on auto balance, what will happen is as the drive shaft is fully charged, the turbine will turn off because it doesn't need to add more power into the shaft. It's fully charged. If I turn that off, we just look at the other one, we can see the drive shaft was fully charged, but then it didn't have enough charge. So the second one had to kick in. Okay, this guy turned back on and he has that mechanical power. He needs to pick back up, back to peak efficiency and he's turned off again and it's going to drop back down. And when it gets to 30%, I think the number is, I think it's 30%, 80%, 30%, 80%, 30%, he's going to try and turn back on. If we get below this red line, that's it. All power stops. The drive shaft is not running fast enough for us to draw any power off. So you don't want them to take too long to turn back on. You don't want to ha have such a, a peak and valley in your uh, power consumption that you end up with a situation where the system actually browns out trying to turn back on. But... The other thing I do want to mention is, yes, with this guy turning on and off, we are constantly, every couple of times per minute, we're having this guy turn back on, which means at some stage, we're constantly wasting steam in an inefficient cycle. Obviously, an efficient cycle, way better than an inefficient cycle. So what we can do is unpause you again, get you up and built, and i'll even turn you on auto balance as well so what will happen now is because we have that much more battery charge on the system we're going to run at peak efficiency charge all the way up once we're all the way charged we'll then turn off and then once we've turned off we'll stay off for a longer period stopping that start stop situation okay because we're yeah because we're fully charged basically so you've now turned off and as we can see power is going down reasonably slowly all right now, what I can do, because I'm using 800 kilowatts worth of power, 700 kilowatts, this, one of these guys outputs one megawatt worth mechanical power. 500 kilowatts plus 500 kilowatts, being a total of one megawatt worth of mechanical power, is getting me two lots of 300 watts worth of electricity, uh, electrical power. If I turn one of these guys off auto balance, so have them run all the time, what will happen is, one, this number is going to drop much slower much much slower because we're constantly adding power back into the system on top of that and that's this is the other big one it means that 
this guy is going to get to stay off for even longer. Rather than we turning on the system, putting in two megawatts, and then turning off the system and pulling out about a megawatt worth of power, about a megawatt worth of mechanical power, that is. Pulling out about a megawatt worth of mechanical power and then having to turn back on and then off and then on and off. I'm constantly putting some power back into the system. So I'm, I'm constantly putting half a megawatt, three quarters of a megawatt into the system. And then I have that, rather than having a, a, a total of a one megawatt worth being pulled off the system, I've only got about 300 kilowatts, okay? I'm pulling off about half as much. And I'm just pulling off for obviously twice as long, which means again, this guy gets to stay off for that much longer, stopping that start, stop, start, stop cycle. So we've got some power. We've talked through the system. We sort of know how it works. Like at the moment, I'm using 14, 15% of the maximum of 12 megawatts off the system. So we sort of know how everything works. But what I did say, I want to share a build with you. I want to share a build with you that works. So what we want to do is very quickly delete all the horrible things that we did right here. Uh, go away. Uh, we'll throw some unit problem to get rid of it all. And I want a second one of those with one of those. And this is the power generation that I go to. So I want that to disappear, please. Okay, so I want one, two, three, four. Okay, cut rather. And then I want to line these guys up. Oh, helps if I put that around the right way. It was almost right. It was just completely backward. Okay. I want to put this here. Okay. So what we want to do is with our pipes, I want to take steam out of this one in here, steam out of this one in here, steam out of this one in here, steam out of this one in here. Okay. Same time that coal belt, that coal belt moves 60 items per second. Uh, connect. You were going to use 18. So if I have another one that moves another 18, we're up to what 36 36 per second i could even add another boiler on the t on the end but if we're putting power nowhere near coal is it puts a lot of stress on the trucks delivering coal it seems 36 especially if we're going to have you know efficiency and 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 auto balance turned on and a few other things it's not so bad on the trucks the other option trying to move the water across the map way worse it's easier to move the coal across the map because yes moving water across the map is an option okay with that done we're going to add uni and get all that instant built the other thing i am going to do is going to add in my smokestacks and yes i still believe it's easy just to have one smokestack each one i could save some resources uh but it's it's like five construction part t1 and honestly it's just not worth it um okay next thing i want is power generators so hopefully i have enough room okay so for every one of these i need two of these so that's gonna be two for one four for two. Oh really i'm one tile short i'm one tile short okay we're gonna put one at this side because i have no choice and i also add on a flywheel Okay, that flywheel having 80 megawatt seconds worth of uh, stored power is a lifesaver. Okay, so if I unpause everything, we throw unity at everything. Uh, I also want to set these guys to power production number one. We're going to have a truck slam into the whole thing. Yeah, you're super stuck, dude. We've separated the map with power. Okay, so as we can see straight away, the system just kicked in, okay? I have, I'm, I'm, I'm like red right just gone over that red line okay i have no available power but as the system kicks in we will have all these guys charge up so we now have a max output of 100 percent we're up and we're running we're producing power we're producing both mechanical power and electrical power and none of these guys are on auto balance yet okay so we're now fully charged the drive shaft we're, we're well up over the 80 percent mark and we now have an efficiency loss i'm going to turn everybody onto auto balance except for this last guy because like i said i'm producing at least 600 600 kilowatts or i'm consuming at least 600 kilowatts worth of uh electrical power which means i can run this guy in theory flat out non-stop why there we go there we go so this guy's going to run with 100 percent efficiency and as we can see this is barely moving now it really really isn't moving 
because I'm just not using the power that much. When we do get to... Oh, this one's still running. This one's still running. Pause! You're ruining the demonstration. Bad generators. Okay. Also bad generators. All right, back to this. Okay. So yes, we, we, we're going to slowly use power off this. But when we finally get down to 20%, which is what? Uh, 30%. So about 32 megawatt seconds. We should see... Yeah, 34. There we go. Uh, we should see each one of these kick in full speed. And because we have four of them, we're going to charge that up very, very quickly. Like We've just got to 100% efficiency and we've maxed it out and they've been turned off. Ideally, I should probably turn these two guys off because they're not really needed with my power draw currently. But, you know, they're here. Why not? Okay. So this is... What I would suggest you guys build. Okay, honestly, at the end of the day, if I had to make a suggestion, one of these. Okay, we're gonna have two two pipes worth of water in, which sounds like a lot, but considering we were putting in 30 kilowatts here and 30 kilowatts here worth of power with 18, sorry, 36 coal, 36 coal, I'm now making a total of 300, 600, 1200, uh, 2.4 megawatts worth of power for a cost of 60 kilowatts yeah the only things you guys need to do if you really want to make sure that the system runs all the time is improve the priority on delivering it of coal also to avoid brownouts in your power grid make sure these two are set to priority number one like these guys need to have power to make sure you have water to make sure the whole system runs uh belts will use power always always they're the f one of the first things it does use power so your belt won't fail but yes if you have a brownout you might get in a situation where the groundwater pumps don't work by all means build a tank as a safety measure but honestly i don't think it's worth it if these are set to priority one but yes this is the little build this little build i'd like to present to you obviously you want all the power generators on the one end which means have one extra tile when you play the whole thing out but yeah this is what i want to show you share with you guys I do hope this has explained power generation 2 to you. If I missed anything, by all means, swing by my Discord. Come and ask some questions there. I will be posting a high resolution screenshot of this particular build on my Discord, as always, with, as I've done with all the other builds, just in case you guys want to count out uh, exactly how many big tiles, small tiles, whatever you need to build the power plant. Unfortunately, there's no way to put a right angle drive shaft in here and have it loop back on itself, which is something I would mind doing that's going to bring us to the end of the video so a couple of things if you dropped in that like earlier you don't think this video is worth it if you didn't learn anything by all means by all means have it back right now i apologize i did my best if you did watch the video and you thought it was helpful and you didn't drop that like on before can i ask that you do it now it just helps with the youtube algorithm helps me find the video last thing i do want to mention is of course there is that playlist down the bottom if you guys want to you know have a check of the playlist see if there's any other tutorial videos oh actually there was one more thing i did want to mention we've now watched like a 25 minute video together i haven't stopped talking the whole way through probably means i should probably go hydrate but at the same time you've enjoyed the whole lot ad free because I run an ad at the start of the video and ad at the end of the video. That's really about it. I don't have ads during the videos because I value my time. I value your time. I don't want you guys to sit through an ad if you're going to, if you can avoid it. So what I do ask is I ask that you consider supporting the channel. There is right beside the subscribe button. You should have clicked by now. There is the join button. If you want to join the channel, help support the channel. It's really expensive. It costs the whole of a dollar per month because I, I don't think you should be paying five, six, ten bucks for, for, a for a membership to a channel, a dollar, a dollar. That's all I ask. Just if everybody threw in a dollar, we'd be fine. We'd be fine. I can afford to do this full time. At the same time, you could always go across to Patreon. Patreon, you can just do 12 months upfront. Uh, you get a two month discount, I think. So it ends up being as $2 per month. So I think it ends up being $20 per year. You come across to Patreon, support me over at Patreon. I very much appreciate it. I'd also appreciate if, yeah, you click the subscribe button on the way out, but that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. Hope this explained power to you and I'll see you guys in the very next video. All right, bye.